Okay, I'm going to do a little something different today on uh, my video. I am currently working on this John Deere lawnmower, and what I've been doing is stripping off the, the paint or brushing the paint off. And I haven't put it on video because I'm sure it would be a terribly boring video, but this is the only project I got going on right now, and I'm almost finished getting the paint off. I'm just going to go through this real quick, kind of show you what I got left. I'm not taking all the paint off, I don't think. I took it off in the most rusted areas. But like here, I think I'm just going to sand that. Touch it up. But here I got a little bit. I, I don't know if I'm going to take all this off. Uh, I also bought some of that Farm Implement Rust-Oleum JD Green paint, spray paint. And I wanted to do a test to see how mismatched colored it was. So I took it in a spot, you know, I sprayed it in a spot that I could easily identify what the difference was. So you can see here I sprayed it, and it got a little bit oversprayed, but it really doesn't have a lot of difference in color. So I got to get that off. I'm not going to paint up here. I'm going to leave that alone up in the engine compartment. That'd just be too much work. Or take the engine out. I'm not wanting to do a complete refurbish. I'm just wanting to get it into a state where it looks halfway decent then I got the front that I got to deal with and then on the inside of, of that you probably won't be able to see it it's rusted down there too and I might just spray some spray paint I don't think I'm gonna deal with trying to get in there and then I'm gonna come around and do the same thing over here because I got some loose paint on this side as well Now, then I will, uh, now this one had a foot pad on it. What I did, I was took a torch and I heated it up and that came right off with the, the drill. So I'll uh, get that cleaned up. And then I got a little spot in the back that I got to clean up here. And then I think I'm done with the drill. The what problem with the hood is plastic. And there are spots in it that needs fixed. I don't know if I want to paint it. I, I tested it out yesterday, uh, whether that paint would stick to it, and it did a nice job right there. That's painted. I don't know. Oh. Okay, so here you see that I got quite a bit done with a battery and a half. I forgot that I used a little bit of that first battery last night I was experimenting a little bit with that round uh, cone shaped brush so I got most of that done I don't know on the top I am right here I am NOT gonna take this too seriously I'm just gonna spray because you can't see it with the hood on so uh, you know I'll prime it but I, I'm just not gonna get too in depth with it because I don't want to take that engine off Let's talk about the welding I hope you can hear me as you know, well, for example, just the other day, I welded a bar onto this jack for this lawnmower. Here's a screenshot of it, I mean, a uh, picture and picture of it, of me welding it. And in every video, I clearly state that I am not a welder. This is the first welder I've ever owned. The only other time I've ever welded was uh, my dad had a welder old Lincoln welder is what it was called and stick welder he had a dump truck and he let me weld on it and that's the only welding I've ever done so I've been trying to learn how to weld watching YouTube videos and I feel like I'm doing pretty good for as little experience that I have of course I'm there's a ton more I need to learn and a ton more I need to practice but for as little bit as I've done I feel like I've done really well. So now the question is, should I be showing you what I'm doing on my YouTube video? Apparently, if you don't know how to do something, you shouldn't be showing it on YouTube, according to some of the viewers. Well, I don't know about that. Since I am clearly stating in every video that I weld in that I'm not a welder, you shouldn't be taking my advice, and if you're not smart enough to understand that, 
then it really isn't on me, it's on you. You know, when it, you go to a video and it says, I've got 15 years of welding experience, okay, you might want to listen to that guy. When you listen to a guy who says, I've been welding for a day, you, you should be able to make your own determination that, yeah, I'm not going to listen to this guy. What I'm trying to do, and I think it should be quite obvious, uh-oh, they're skitty. Everybody likes to see skitty, so I guess we'll take a minute to show you skitty. There she is. What are you whining about? You want to go inside? Yeah, you want to go inside? In my vi so what I'm trying to show you in my videos with the welding is trying new things, learning new things. If th that was the case, that I shouldn't be showing you things that I've never done, I'm not experienced at, then I shouldn't have showed you how to build, or I shouldn't have built the tiny house on video. And I did. The, because I've never built a tiny house before. I've never built anything. I mean, I've done some stuff. I built this camper, I guess. Put a porch on, you know, redid a porch. Closed in another porch. Made a dog kennel. But other than that, I really haven't done much building. I certainly have never hung trusses. So, I feel like that what I'm trying to teach you is you can do things. With enough willpower, you can get things done. But I, I think what it is, is, is people are demoralized. They, they went through life not being able to do anything, and then they see this guy, 52 years old, starting over. I mean, we started over basically 10 years ago. I, we quit our jobs, started traveling down the road. And we're learning new skills in our older ages. Hooking up solar panels. I mean, I've done all this stuff before, but never lived on them. And some people, I guess, think, well, you know, I've just gotten too old. I went out and partied all my youth, and now my body just can't do it, or, you know, whatever the case is. Or they don't think they're smart enough. And I'm telling you, you are. You can do it. You think me and Carolyn are in tip-top shape health? I, due to watch our earlier videos, some of the very first videos, Carolyn could barely walk most of the time with her back being out. But even at that, you know, we try to improve our health. We're eating a carnivorous diet, getting rid of the inflammation that you get through carbs. And her back doesn't hurt near as much as it used to. Although she still complains about it. And she, you would think that she she hurts as bad as she used to sometimes. But she, she's still walking. She would lay up weeks at a time in a pop-up camper. To bring up is my clothes. People really have a problem with the clothes I wear. You're all tattered. You need to get new clothes. Well, out here... I can't go 10 minutes without ringing something that I'm wearing. Catch my leg on a fence. I do that about nightly. Um, and then, of course, you know, I'm working on these lawnmowers. I see absolutely no point in putting on relatively good clothes. You know, these are ripped. So, since I know I'm going to rip them today, why wear something that's not already ripped? It's, uh, it's interesting how people think that, you know, you, in order to do anything, you got to spend a million dollars to do My it. My mother told me every day, getting at home from school, change out of your school clothes before you go outside and play. Well, I guess it's stuck. I guess nobody else's mother has made them do that. I guess all their other mothers were rich and could afford a new pair of Levi jeans once a week. Well, I wasn't rich, don't, and I'm kind of glad I wasn't. Taught me how to learn, live uh, miserly. And I know that's a real crime. Carol and I were talking about this the other day. I was, when we were nomads, we were traveling, we made it to 
the National Forest next to the North Rim National, the North Rim Grand Canyon National Park. But we didn't go into the National Park. We stayed in the National Forest. And we, we were literally parked right next to the edge of the Grand Canyon. We slept right on the edge of the Grand Canyon. If there had been an earthquake, we'd have fell into the Grand Canyon. It was amazing. We did live feeds with me sitting on the edge of the Grand Canyon. When you go into the National Park, it's all fenced off. You can't really look over the side. There's definitely no way you're going to sleep next to it. And so that would have cost $20 or $30, $40, whatever it was to go in just for a visit. Well, months later after we left, I was on another channel reading the comments. Some guy says, I can't stand that little house off. Let's see, little house on the road. He was so miserly, he couldn't even go into the National North Rim National Park. Well, what did that hurt? Well, wait a minute. What I had was better than what the National Park had, and it was free. And you're complaining that I didn't spend money. Not you personally, but the, this commenter. What is the deal? I don't understand why everything. So he says, I'm not watching that loser anymore. Well, I guess if that's what floats your boat, you tell someone how to spend their money when you're literally getting something better. And so I've tried to teach that in this channel, and I'm surprised how many people don't get it. That you can live better, happier, and freer with less stuff and spending less money than when you have to make money. If you got to constantly make money just so you can go into the national park instead of the national forest, and, and lose out on all that beauty that I got to see. I don't see it. I don't get it. And I can't believe you're not understanding it. So yeah, I buy old junk a lot more. I fix it up. And I sell it for a little bit so I can... I don't know. I don't even really need the money. I just do it because I am worried about my old age. I want to make sure I got enough that if I can't make YouTube videos or I can't work on lawnmowers, so then I got enough that I can continue to buy food or whatever. But I'm telling you, Carol and I have never been happier. We are not required to go work for an employer. And that is very freeing. And for folks that don't get that and think that I need a new pair of clothes so I can work on a lawnmower just to satisfy whatever weird old fetish you have about clothes, well, sorry. You're going to have to go find somebody else who's got a lot more money and a lot more, I don't know, concern about their... You know, it, it, so there's one other thing I wanted to talk about today, and that's the chickens. A lot of people ask about chickens. Like, as soon as you stop making videos about chickens, chickens don't exist anymore. They can't survive. I don't know what they did prior to video recorders. I'm sure they had chickens back then. But today, you can't have chickens unless you're on YouTube or at least they're on YouTube so uh, actually I guess it's true so as you know we bought some chickens we tried to incubate this year and we didn't have much luck with it because the, the rooster just wasn't fitting in with the, the hens and so we bought some well she sold us uh, chickens with Merrick's disease so we lost half of the chickens that she sold us and the other so they're still alive but they're so small they're not going to produce eggs it did spread over to the bigger ones now the bigger ones are supposed to not be affected by Merix because Merix is a growing disease as it grows as the chicken grows the disease affects their nerves and they end up becoming paralyzed and dying because they can't eat or drink or move but we had the rooster got sick and we had a couple more get sick from it. And then, just the other day, we had another dog attack. It's been two years since we had a dog attack. And I was absolutely sure we had the thing secured. I mean, we, we've got three fences around that thing. Three. And they, they, this dog still got in. Tore down the fence. So, he killed five of the big chickens. The ones that were producing eggs. So, with Merrick's, the problem is, 
if we got more chickens, they would all of a sudden get Merrick. So you'd have to get them sh shots. You'd have to give them Merrick shots. Well, that, and then you're running up costs. Because the, the ground is now contaminated with Merrick's disease. It, we, we will never be able to get rid of it unless we move. Of course, we'd have to destroy our coops and everything and completely start over somewhere else on the property to get away from the Merricks. So I think we're going to give up on chickens. I know that's going to disappoint a lot of people, but we, this is the second flock we lost from dog attacks. I mean, what's interesting is we have survived bobcats, huge bobcat. Bobcat as big as a lab, um, maybe even a pit bull. It was huge. We survived fox attacks. We had two fox. We survived both of them. But we cannot survive the dogs. And people will say, well, get a fence. Well, I have a fence. It's called the chicken run. It's a three-layer fence. How much more fence do you want me to have? We'll put it around your property. Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. The dog's gonna say, oh, well, look at that. No trespassing sign. I'll stop right here. I got it washed, uh, at least the first wash. Put some soap. My little pressure washer comes with a soap dispenser. So put some soap on it. Then I pressure washed it. And now I'm gonna let it dry. And we'll see if it needs washed again. I have Carolyn come out and get a perspective on it. Just to make sure everything looks clean. Now, a little bit of a disappointment, but not totally unexpected. It looks like I might have to paint the hood. It's got scratches all over the top that I really couldn't see through the dirt before. So that's no big deal. I, after I prime the mower, I'll just go ahead and sand this. I don't need to prime it. I just need to sand it. And then we'll just spray some paint on it. I know it sticks good because it stuck so good here. So that's not going to be a big issue just didn't want to have to do it but since I got to do it I got to do it and uh, then tomorrow probably come out and start taping it up so I don't get any overspray on things and then we get primer on it and then of course then I got to sand the primer with 600 grit wet dry paper sandpaper we'll keep it wet and all you're doing is scuffing it up and uh, then we'll scuff up the the hood also we don't have to prime it and then I guess we'll just paint it after that wash it again we'll have to wash it after we sand it and then we'll paint it so so if you'll click this up next box to take you to video where I was working on this so I hope I can inspire you to find happiness when you're living your dreams thanks for watching